All right, folks, so we are officially recording and we're going to get our T our first TMN Tuesday of 2021 that kicked off um, a little early as we cover the virtual meeting room etiquette. And I know that are so there's some more folks joining us as they get joining us. Um, we're going to run through um, through this information um, so that we're all on the same page on um, on how the TMN Tuesdays are going to function. Um, these are a a one hour time block that we want to offer to all of our master naturalists and to the members of the public. These are open to the public if they want to attend. And we're going to be good stewards of your time today, knowing that you guys are busy. So we're going to try and keep this to that one hour time block um, and uh, a lot questions to the end of that time block. If we have time, um, you will notice that you're not able to unmute, but we do have the chat function open that chat function. Um, is for on topic professional and respectful discussion um, and please uh, please keep your uh, your comments in that chat box again on topic and use that chat to everyone function so that everyone gets to see that um, and it's nice to see all of the the warm there's um, as we get started in there today um, Again, this uh, 1 hour session is an opportunity for advanced training for master naturalists. Please uh, refer to your local ma uh, your local VMS administrator for um, how to log this hour. Um, it is available for 80 hours as a watched as a live uh, live event or watched as a full recording. Um, and these recordings, I'm hoping to have this posted by the end of the day, if not first thing tomorrow morning. Um, and that'll be the standard for a standard practice for these monthly events uh, going forward throughout 2021. And then if uh, you have any uh, issues with WebEx, we do have our WebEx help guide on our TMN Tuesday webpage, and we've dropped that link into the chat for you uh, as well. So with that, Michelle, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. You're going to make me say that you're muted, the saying of 2020. <laughs> Oh, it's it's the role I play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so with that, we're going to get this started as we've got some more folks joining us again. Welcome to our inaugural TMN Tuesday. Um, this is going to be a monthly event held on the second Tuesday of each month during the noon lunch hour in the central time zone. I know we have a few folks joining us from different time zones, um, but we're so glad that you guys are here and joining us as we wanted to offer these types of opportunities throughout 20 to keep connected, to keep informed, and to, to share resources. Um, you'll notice as well that our TMN Tuesdays throughout 21 are going to um, stay fairly flexible as we'll plan uh, these events a month to two months out so that we can respond and, and stay uh, reactive to events and hot topics of the year. Um, and as 2020 taught us to be flexible is um, to be relevant um, in this day and age. So we've got a pretty lengthy agenda uh, for our first TMN Tuesday, and we're going to try and um, keep, again, good stewards of your time and keep right at that one hour mark. Um, so with that, Michelle, we're going to kick off and it's you and I today. Yeah. So introduce yourself for us. Yeah. Um, so my name is Michelle Haggerty. I'm the statewide coordinator for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. Um, and we wanted to kick off this. Um, this year's uh, inaugural event with you kind of giving a, a state of the program and um, where we've been in the past year, what, we, what we're working on and um, what we hope to work on in 2021. So welcome everyone. Yeah, and as she said, I, I am Mary Pearl Moyt. Um, if I didn't introduce myself earlier. I am the assistant state coordinator um, and Michelle and I as a team are your TMN state office. So to give you an idea of um, what our past year looked like, almost a year, it's coming up pretty quick on almost a year ago now. Um, this is what our lives have looked like for the past almost year now. Um, working from home, moving from various situations of um, virtual learning to um, working virtually um, all across the state with, with our families, um, right at our sides and um, sometimes menacing coworkers. Um, which or I know that your bosses. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> um, we also, so we, in addition to, um, 
the the primary team of Mary Pearl and I um, managing and working with you from the state office. We also have an extended team that we work with. Um, we are a dispersed team. Mary Pearl is in um, the College Station area. I am in Hill Country. Um, in addition to us being dispersed, we work with you as a dispersed team of our volunteers all across the state. And we have a further extended TMN state office um, that is a dispersed team as well. Um, Richard, Richard Heilbrand with Texas Parks and Wildlife is in San Antonio. Todd Sink with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service is in College Station area. Addison Regenitter is um, our student worker for the program. And sorry if I butchered your last name, Addison. Um, and she is, you're in, back in College She's Station. In Marvel. She's correct. in Marble Falls right now. And so, and then also um, a very part-time uh, worker that we have contract um, labor with Cheryl Foster, who is our, our Texas Master Naturalist um, VMS admin. Um, she's a coordinator for our administrative team. Um, Cheryl Foster is in the Waco area. So, um, we mentioned as we were getting started that the, the word of this past year was pivot and that we did in 2020 and even moving into 2021. Um, and the phrase of the year, as you saw earlier, and as I demonstrated, um, maybe playing the part, maybe not was you're muted. Um, March of 2020, we saw that, um, Starting in March with the pandemic, most of our uh, chapters or about a third of our chapters were in a, a training phase um, in the middle of their trainings when the pandemic hit. Um, they had to pivot to meet the challenge um, and move from in person um, meetings and trainings to um, some version of online delivery for the training for their programs. Um, in addition to trainings moving virtually or in online some form or fashion, we also had our master naturalist chapters um, and their meetings and their whole infrastructure um, and the way they operate meet, moving online uh, to some version of online in uh, about a year ago with the pandemic. Um, at that time, we recognized that this human connection um, with our program um, that we once had had completely changed um, and maybe changed forever. Um, we don't know that yet, but we had to, we recognize how important that human connection and, and um, the family that our program is and what we value. Um, we had to find a way to move to uh, different ways of meeting and connecting with each other. Um, with in March and April, um, we had some of the some of these new tool, meeting resources and tools that were added to our toolbox for the program. Um, so meeting like we are here today um, became a norm for us in March and April of last year. We began meeting with our um, our chapter presidents on a monthly basis um, first to not only first to get the information um, out, things that were changing daily and changing weekly um, regarding operations and the safety and health of our volunteers and how the program was going to adapt to move and um, to move forward. Um, we started meeting with our chapter presidents on a, presidents on a monthly basis and um, that that um, opportunity was so value is so valuable for our, our program for us for our membership that we will continue that in the new year. Um, this is where we get the opportunity to discuss uh, program direction. Um, some of these new ideas and resources come out of these meetings and that we um, put into enact into policy or put into policy later on and also helps to establish that human, connect, human connection. Um, adding to the new communication method of the online meetings, we expanded um, our new we began meeting and expanding our meetings with the new chapter, new class training directors of each chapter. Um, obviously, there were lots of things that needed to be changed and, and um, we needed to pivot there. So we gathered these uh, new class training directors in on meetings to talk about ideas and things that they were doing and how they were handling and moving forward um, with 
offering um, training and advanced training uh, virtually and online. We will continue those meetings um, as needed in the in the 2021 as well. Um, the other thing that we, the other group that we've continued meeting with or, or picked up again um, at a, a heightened level was our um, state representatives. We meet occasionally with the state representatives over the past year. We, we held, um, we began, picked up meetings with them again um, as another point of communication um, and a, another um, place to help another person or um, opportunity to help spread the message of of the constant change that we're, we've been going through. Yeah, and as we review these kind of um, st the state of the program of where we uh, where we have been through 2020, it's important to kind of review the the transitions and these these adaptations and innovations that that uh, your chapters have made throughout 2020 and the directions that you've gone as we begin to look forward to 2021 and make. Um, make statewide and chapter level program planning initiatives for 2021. So we're going to continue to review some of these 2020 um, wrap ups and and talk about how some of these are going to roll into 2021. As Michelle mentioned, those open virtual communication lines and monthly and regular meetings with your chapter leaders are uh, vital for us at the statewide level to to maintain that that human connection and those um, open communication lines. We also wanted to know what was at the heart of our master naturalists. Um, Michelle mentioned that this is a family um, and that um, that we all care deeply about the environment and the natural world around us and how that has helped us to um, uh, how that has helped us to live and survive throughout these um, pandemic period times. And so we kicked off this uh, this project in April of 2020. Um, just fresh off of the, the immediate closure of everything around us. Um, and we asked that question, what does nature mean to you and how has nature helped you during these pandemic times? And, and that project was a huge success with 31 videos, um, 12 written submissions. We had an original song and all of that is still shared on our website. And Michelle will drop that link into the, or Addison is dropping that link into the chat. Thank you, Addison. Um, and, and these are a great reflection on that immediate response of our master naturalists um, having that outlet to alleviate their stress and their fears and the unknown period that we were going through in early spring of 2020. And so looking back on this, um, it's, it's incredible to go back and revisit those videos and I strongly suggest that you do, but we are actually going to open this project back up in April of 2021. Um, and, and look at, in hindsight, what this last year has meant um, and how nature has helped you or how the outdoors and the Nat Master Naturalist program has helped you to reflect, distract, relax, um, de-stress, um, or just get, dis I think I said distracted already, but just um, immerse yourself into, um, into these other potentially more calming uh, scenarios um, than the the life around us that we're that we're currently living, and so look forward to this type of um, a reopening and uh, and re questioning um, how nature has helped you as a master naturalist um, over the last twelve months, and then. We're talking about, we've talked about the flexibility and this innovation of our master naturalists. Um, right away, our chapters were switching um, in their spring basic training classes, but also switched in our fall basic training classes. And these are things that have continued in or in, in these innovations have uh, perpetuated through our program. Through the fall, we had uh, 14 chapters hold fall basic training classes in some way, shape, or form with changes in schedules and changes in, um, in and methods of delivering information all the way from looking at information uh, or watching classes on a cell phone, which some of you may be watching this today on a cell phone as well. Um, and so having that that sense of flexibility and uh, and perseverance in obtaining this naturalist knowledge is really a token of the strength of, uh, of you as master naturalists and, um, and as the program of being willing and able to to transform and move forward. And then 
And then we went into the fall and I think by September, we all hoped that life was gonna go back to normal, of course, um, but realizing that we had to maintain that, that innovative um, and flexible streak well throughout a longer period of time than we originally thought. We did kick off our virtual volunteer fair 2020 in September. Um, and, and this is another event that we, um, uh, that worked well and we've learned lots of lessons from and we will continue to have reverberations of this type of event um, throughout 2021 and uh, in the future with a 2021 event already in the works and we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, but our virtual volunteer fair September 2nd, 2020, we had 400 projects from our two state agencies um, with over 650 master naturalists registered to attend the, those events. And this was an opportunity for our, our sponsoring agencies and our project agencies, our project sponsors to connect with our volunteers, even from a distance um, and, and through virtual means, uh, knowing that you guys were still adamantly eager to, uh, adamant and eager to volunteer and to put your efforts um, out there into the world um, as master naturalists. And, and that was well heard through this event. Um, and that's something that, again, we're hoping to, uh, we will be repeating in 21. And then last but not least, to wrap up um, our, our 2020 events that, that we were able to take and transition to this virtual platform, we held our virtual annual meeting, which I hope many of you guys were able to attend. And if you weren't able to attend, um, there uh, were lots of learning lessons from the first ever virtual annual meeting that we've taken into um, events like today's uh, virtual TMN Tuesday, um, hosting events like this in this um, open virtual format so that we can communicate with you guys and hear also back from you guys, hear your feedback on um, instructions that you wanna hear, instructional uh, advanced training material that you wanna hear, um, and, and provide that, um, that type of training environment. Um, uh, a little bit of wrap up on our virtual annual meeting. We did have four months to the day. Um, we made the decision on June 17th to take that event virtual um, and then wrapped that event up on October 17th. And, um, and it was a huge success. We had um, uh, registration costs kept low. We did sh shift the schedule. We were able to move a lot of our events and our awards to that virtual platform, along with our virtual field session day. I think that's my biggest takeaway from the virtual annual meeting is showcasing these new methods for hosting trainings that seem to be the most in-person and hands-on based, even in a virtual format. The five chapters that hosted those virtual field session days really went above and beyond the call of duty um, by putting those videos together. And that virtual annual meeting, I talked about the success. We had over 1,150 in attendance. Um, it was the most accessible annual meeting to date with um, members from every single one of our 48 chapters that had uh, been established in attendance. We had 93 technical sessions, which falls in line with the same number of attendees as our standard annual meeting, our in-person annual meeting. Um, and again, our timeline changed, but um, seeing how our volunteers were able to respond to this new virtual training platform, um, even for the most uh, for the most unique types of trainings, there was a a, a live pressing. There were um, I'll, I can't even go into all of the different session types that we had, um, but it was really, it was really great to see all of that innovation and that response to this new, um, new atmosphere for our virtual annual meeting. A couple of the things that we'd like to highlight from 2020 were some of the awards given over the year. Um, one of those awards were, or actually two of those awards were our annual um, chapter advisor of the year award. We had two awardees this, this past year, and we don't always give two awards out, um, but this past year, Javier De Leon from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, who uh, is a, an advisor for not only one chapter, but two, um, Javier is a chapter is a chapter advisor from Parks and Wildlife with, for our Rio Grande Valley chapter and the South Texas border chapter. 
Um, our second advisor of the year award went to John O'Connell um, with Texas A&M Agri Life Extension. And um, John is the chapter advisor with our Cradle of Texas chapter. Um, with any of our chapters across the state, um, our advisors have been a huge help, uh, not only this year, but in past years, but especially this past year. Um, just the, the, the changes that our advisors have had helped navigate at the local level with um, our chapters and sometimes a, a few chapters within the area, um, their help has been tremendous. And we, this program would not be possible, not only without these advisors, but without any of our advisors, this program would not be possible. So thank you. If you're an advisor online today um, with us, thank you for everything you do for and with the Master Naturalist program um, today and every day and every year. Um, another, a couple other awards that we gave out over the past year in, in 2020 was our exemplary project awards. And typically these are, all of these awards are given um, or awarded and announced at our annual meeting. Um, so if you attended our annual meeting, um, you, you've, you know this, um, and you've seen these awards presented. Um, but if you ever need inspiration, um, some examples of ways that chapters are adapting, projects are adapting, and moving forward in these challenging times and through the pandemic, I invite you to visit these, visit our, our links on the website where the presentations from uh, these awards took place. Um, our, we did change the, the, chap, the exemplary project award this year where it was all of the projects were presented the week before the annual meeting. They were presented to a judging team um, and those presentations were recorded. Um, and just the, I, I'm just so inspired and thankful to uh, the local chapters and their local projects, the way that they've been able to pivot and adapt um, and move forward in these trying times. So um, I invite you to take a look at these project fair entries. Um, there's great ideas there that you can adopt or adapt to move forward at your local chapter level or a project that you're working on, um, even in 2021. And then building off of the, these huge successes from 2020, we wanna take a moment now and look forward to, uh, to what 2020, Looking back at the successes of 2020 and how these innovations and pivots were happening, we want to look forward to these uh, to how we will be planning for 2021 and some of those key focus areas for our program in 21. Michelle, do you want to cover this? Yeah. So um, some of the areas that we wanted to continue looking at and um, working on in 2021 for the program is um, continuing to utilize those virtual resources for the lines of communication with the program. Um, we want to um, continue, as we mentioned, the, the monthly chapter president's calls. Um, our, our website over the past year um, went through a, a major update and um, rebranding and um, uh, Mary Pearl and Addison did a great job with that. Um, we are working on having our website be the go to area um, for all of our program resources, materials, offer, offerings, and ideas. Um, so, when you get a chance, um, if you haven't seen it already, um, spend some time looking around our website. Um, this, as I mentioned, it is going, we are making this the go to area of uh, communication, how we get our information out first and foremost. Um, secondly, we'll continue to use our, our uh, listserv. Um, and then monthly calls and um, opportunities like this, the virtual meeting opportunities like this to continue to get information out and keep the lines of communication open. Um, we wanted to also, we want to in 2021, increase our uh, virtual based instruction and engagement opportunities and advanced training. And this, this launch of um, the TMN Tuesdays is one of those. Um, we have, uh, you know, this meeting and then every second Tuesday after this, um, we are planning an advanced training, statewide advanced training um, for our program. Um, we are continuing the virtual volunteer fair. 
So you saw that we had the 20, the successful um, fall fair that was um, so successful in September of last year. And um, thank you to those who mentioned that the virtual volunteer fair allowed was the opportunity and what they what they were able to, um, what new projects they were able to find and virtual projects they were able to find through the virtual volunteer fair helped that, that person and those members um, recertify in a year where they otherwise wouldn't be able to get out and um, work with the public or do outreach. Um, uh, these virtual opportunities allowed them um, and, and enabled them to get, their, get certified for 2020. Um, we anticipated some form or fashion of um, closures and um, things that were not exactly closures, but um, restrictions um, for getting out and, and working face to face with people in 2021. So we have we are planning um, the 20 the spring um, virtual volunteer fair again. So we invite you to we'll we'll discuss that in um, some subsequent slides here. But uh, another plug for that for you to to uh, sign up for that. It is advanced training. Um, and for and you can find out about all the new service projects um, or any new service projects that um, you could work from on from home or virtually um, that would allow uh, service hours beyond getting out and working with the peers in public. And then our 2021 annual meeting. Um, we don't yet time will tell what that looks like for 2021, but we are um, planning on that. Um, continuing to hold an annual meeting in some form or fashion in 2021. And um, it is our, our premier advanced training event for the program. And we will continue that in 2021. And then um, the third item on here is uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion were obviously a big topic over 2020. And we want to continue that conversation and continue efforts to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion within our chapters um, and for our chapters statewide. So this will be a topic we'll, we'll be continuing to work on. And then with all of these plans that we have for 2021, we also have to maintain our, uh, our COVID guidelines that we've laid out for the Master Naturalist Program. And Again, as Michelle said, our website is going to be the master hub for the most up to date information. That is where um, we will uh, prioritize putting information for um, for any updates that may happen to not only to the COVID guidelines for all of our events that are coming up in the future. Um, and so our current uh, return to service guidelines with the master naturalist program as listed on our website and Addison just dropped that link into the chat for us. Um, is uh, that all master naturalist events, meetings, and service projects must be compliant with your state, county, and local health proclamations and ordinances. Our priority is your safety um, and your health and well being. As Michelle mentioned at the very beginning, this is a family, and we feel deeply um, for, for your safety and your well being. Um, and keeping our community safe is part of our engagement in activities out into the community as well. Um, the Master Naturalist Program is operating under the Texas A&M AgriLife Extensions guidelines um, uh, as a as a two state agency partnership program. Um, from the very beginning, the Master Naturalist Program chose Texas A&M AgriLife's guidelines for um, COVID return to service as um, as the the one state agency that we would follow, um, so that we have one single point for reengaging in uh, community service and volunteer service and. Uh, and trainings and so on. Um, these update these guidelines are being continuously updated, which I know is um, both uh, difficult and uh, frustrating in times when um, you probably like me are planners and you like to plan for things. But with the state of our um, of our state and our country and, and uh, the uh, constant changing guidelines, um, we felt it was important to continuously have these guidelines update. Um, and know that you, through the, those innovations and that flexibility that we talked about earlier, um, have the ability to, to, to roll with us as, um, as we roll through these guidelines um, and their, their changes as they may come. Um, and just uh, stating that, that additional, that no chapters or volunteers are exempt from these guidelines. Um, and we do try to communicate these as soon as possible to you guys as well. 
I want to, I want to thank everybody, um, all of our chapter leaders and even our, our, in our members at the local level. Um, thanks for bearing with us in, um, these changing times. Um, thanks for following the guidelines, um, and striving to keep yourselves, your communities and your members safe. So. Thanks for being on this roller coaster with us. I wouldn't yeah. rather ride it with anyone else. <laughs> um, I've never been a big fan of roller coasters, though. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, so we've talked about the website a few times. We just wanted to put a plug out here one more time. Again, knowing that 2021 is um, uh, is upon us, and we are um, we are moving through. Um, these new virtual events and these these new types of program focuses, as Michelle mentioned, uh, with our monthly calls and our, our open communication lines, our TMN website is our master hub for all of our information. And we've tried to streamline it and keep it as um, as legible as possible for everybody, so that you know where to go to get the information that you're seeking. Um, two of the places that I would always start is with our Naturalist News, um, which is listed under our Events tab. And then our events calendar, which is listed under our naturalist news tab, and then our events tab, which is listed under our events tab, for our events calendar where we're sharing. Did I say that right? Um, we'll we'll be sharing uh, state and local level advanced training opportunities um, and and upcoming uh, dates that you may want to know about, such as National Volunteer Week, which is coming up in April. Um, and our uh, Earth Day, which is also coming up in April and other um, statewide and national uh, days of uh, significance for this conservation community. Um, so that's a great place to, to start and to go to find um, the most up to date information. Um, and then don't forget about our listserv. That listserv con uh, link is right there and Addison's going to drop it in the chat there. Um, so that you can sign up for our, our emails uh, when Michelle and I receive emails uh, for uh, statewide events or trainings that are open for the public or for master naturalists. We share that with the list server. We have announcements on upcoming statewide events, such as this TMN Tuesday. We post that to the list server. And so while we're talking about TMN Tuesday, um, I wanted to take a, just a quick opportunity while we're thinking about calendars and, and, and uh, planning for the future. We talked about this at the very beginning of to, uh, today's event, but um, we are going to be hosting these TMN Tuesdays on the second Tuesday of each month. We are hosting them during the noon hour, realizing that some of you guys work. We uh, scheduled them during the noon hour for a number of different reasons, um, hoping that those who are still working can use their lunch hour during this time break. Um, and, and we're also recording them so that we can share those with those folks who are not able to get off during their lunch break to watch these events. Um, it's also uh, knowing the limitations of our two state office coordinators with families and working from home. Um, working during the, the lunch hour when uh, small children are not in the office with us um, is a, a vital efficiency for us, to be totally honest. Um, but the, the other part of these team and Tuesdays is that we are intentionally keeping these flexible. I know that you guys are planners and you like to plan for months in advance. These dates are set, but the topics are going to be announced. Uh, about 1 to 2 months in advance so that we can maintain that flexibility for topics that come up of importance, um, emerging issues or, um, or keynote speakers that we want to highlight um, going forward in a short time frame. Um, so keep these dates on your calendar, but know that we'll have those topics announced um, uh, on a rolling schedule throughout the year. Um, and we want to ask you to help us to. Uh, to come up with some of these topics, uh, what do you what do you see as emerging issues to be covered in the coming months? Um, share that in the chat. We're always uh, willing to take that feedback and your uh, suggestions for um, our TMN Tuesdays coming up. Some other upcoming events to put on your calendar while we're talking about calendars and you're you're looking at um, planning out the rest of your 2021. We do want you to put our um, February 3rd and 4th virtual volunteer fair on your calendar. As Michelle mentioned, the, the virtual volunteer fair in 2020 being a success and something that uh, enabled our master naturalist volunteers to put, uh, put, bunch, put their volunteer service 
um, and get the, get those hours accomplished in a distanced and a virtual manner from across the state was important for maintaining that certification. Um, we will be hosting this event again. Um, we will be launching registration for this event, hopefully in the next week or two. Um, but go ahead and save those dates and watch that um, that website and uh, sign up for the listserv. And then, as if, as with the, the fall virtual volunteer fair, we will record it, record this 1 also and post it on our website in in the event. You're not able to attend in person. Or not in person, but online online. <laughs> and then, last, but not least, while we're talking about dates, save the date for our uh, 22nd annual meeting. Um, the current dates for that event are October 21st through the 24th. We are slated to hold our annual meeting this year in person at the Dallas Fort Worth Airport Marriott. Of course, as we've mentioned, the word flexibility and the, the word of the year last year was pivot. Um, we are keeping all options open at this time, um, but we earnestly want to see you in person and we are earnestly trying to um, to determine the best method for hosting an event um, of this size and this scale and in this importance to you as volunteers. Um, in, in a way that is safe um, for, for all of our volunteers and all of our community members as well. Um, so at this point, all I can tell you is to save that date um, and make plans to attend in, in some form or fashion for our 22nd annual meeting. And get excited because our annual meeting is always something to get excited about. So you want to talk about uh, 2021 certification? Yeah, so with um, with the close of 2020, we did review um, some of our policies and kind of looked ahead into 2021 to see um, what things were looking like, especially um, related to the pandemic. And as a result, we did um, we do have a couple of um, poli temporary policy updates um, that are uh, an interim policy um, for 2021, um, one of those includes um, basic training. So typically, um, majority of our master naturalists online today were probably um, trained in a very face-to-face -face, um, in the field uh, form of it of uh, new chapter training, new class training. Our temporary policy is to allow for um, pre-recorded basic training sessions uh, and with some. Uh, Follow up via Q and A, um, and we will allow all, all where needed all forty of the planned basic training hours to be conducted in this manner. Um, we encourage us to be used minimally um, or only as needed, as I mentioned earlier, um, and we encourage regional neighboring chapters uh, to collaborate on their advanced training. Uh, sorry, their new class training topics where possible. Um, what we saw in 2020 is that um, several of the people that teach these common topics were were tapped over and over and over and over again. Um, and so this this advanced training or this uh, training policy kind of helps not only chapters in uh, those planning chapter trainings to um, come together and collaborate on efforts, but also our train trainers who um, train, at, uh, provide training at, at, sometimes some of them provide training for all 48 to 50 of our chapters. Um, and so to minimize the, to help um, lessen that burden um, that the online environment that our program is in right now um, and kind of make that easier on everyone, we've. We have the temporary basic training policy um, and then advanced training. We have a temporary policy as well. Um, that temporary policy is to allow for pre recorded advanced training sessions with um, follow up live Q and a with speakers. Um, 1 of the policies that we changed in 2020 um, or updated for 2020 was that all advanced all 8 hours of advanced training, all the required 8 hours of advanced training could be done. Um, via online methods, um, this temporary policy allows for um, pre-recorded, um, which wasn't part of the 2020 um, temporary policy, um, but this the 2021 policy allows for pre-recorded advanced training sessions with follow-up um, live Q and A with the same speaker. 
um, and then hours for watching, not only watching, um, the advanced training, pre-recorded advanced training are allowed, um, and also interaction with the speaker afterwards um, through the Q&A are counted as advanced training also. Um, what's not allowed is uh, no fully recorded videos with no speaker interaction um, for advanced training. And um, as we mentioned, our goal here is to allow group discussion with speakers, that interaction, because learning, um, additional learning happens through the Q&A that takes place um, and the interaction with the speaker. Um, and so our goal with this temporary advanced training policy is to still um, accommodate that additional learning that happens through the Q&A. One thing that is not changing for 2021 is our requirements for um, volunteer service. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. So one of the other areas of focus for our program in 2021 um, is to continue the conversations that we've had over the last year on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, this came to the forefront of um, national headlines in 2020 uh, due to a series of different events, but this has always been a, a part of our program since day one. And we've had these discussions um, uh, throughout the program's history, but we've really decided, uh, or really have not decided, but we've really put priority to these discussions throughout 2020 and will continue that priority on diversity, equity, inclusion in 2021. Um, we have shared our program sponsoring agencies EEO statement as we are sponsored by 2 state agencies. Um, we do have to follow their, uh, their official EEO statement. Um, but we have also started conversations with our chapter presidents on on ways that our, our chapters and our program can recruit and retain and and become a, a much more inclusive and equitable environment for. All members of the community, um, any naturalists is welcome. Um, and so we've had these discussions regularly, monthly with our chapter presidents. Um, we have encouraged them to continue these conversations at the local level, not only at the statewide level. Um, and then many of our chapters have taken a step beyond that and have developed their own uh, DEI chapter committees um, to focus as a task force or focus on these efforts. Um, to, to have these continuing conversations going forward. Um, and so at the statewide level, we are looking for ways to continue to offer trainings and support for these chapter programs, these chapter committees, um, offer trainings and support for, um, for statewide initiatives as well. Um, we were to have a DEI training at the virtual annual meeting in 2020. That unfortunately had a conflict of schedule. Um, and so that has been postponed for later in 2021. Um, and we will update you on on that as soon as we have a speaker and a date and time uh, allocated for that. Um, but do know that this is a priority for our program in 2021, something that we want to maintain a focus on um, throughout the next year and beyond um, as our program continues to grow and continues to reflect the, the community in which you serve as master naturalists. So, while, as we're focusing on 2021 and our program initiatives, we also want to look at some of the fun and shiny things. I know that a lot of these have been things that, that you guys have had questions on. Um, plates, pins, and masks. Um, again, these are the, the shiny new things that um, are sometimes really fun to, to get to talk about. We did have an effort throughout the last two and a half years, three years, to put a Texas Master Naturalist license plate together. Um, and through a volunteer spearheaded fundraising effort um, and donations given um, for that license plate, it was officially passed over to, um, to the Texas DMV last year. Um, we developed artwork for the license plate off of a Master Naturalist member's individual artwork. That artwork was voted on um, by the membership as a whole throughout 2020 and the early parts of 2020. Um, and we have final approval of that plate in December, I believe, of 2020. I think it was December 15th or so. We got an email back from DMV. Everything was moving forward. There is no 
timeline on that plate, but I would anticipate having that plate in early spring of this year. Um, and and we're, we'll announce that as soon as I have that date and that information, we will share that immediately. Um, that final design for our license plate that was chosen um, is here on your screen now. We're excited to represent the Master Nationalist Program with this dragonfly on our, um, on our state license plate. Um, and I will be proudly supporting um, this plate on my vehicle as soon as it comes out. I'm um, excited to, to get to see this uh, driving across the streets. So it'll be fun to get to see uh, dragonflies driving everywhere. And then some other fun um, uh, uh, pins that we have coming out. So Michelle, do you want to talk about our 2020 against all odds pin? Sure. So um, we recognize we we um, announced the our what we're calling the the grit and distance pin or our COVID pin at the annual meeting in October. Um, we recognize that 2020, uh, the year 2020, was tough for everyone. Um, and we want to, um, with that, we wanted to recognize your commitment to the program um, and the service and advanced training that our master naturalists were able to get. Um, we wanted to recognize your hustle, your passion, your perseverance. Um, and this pin will commemorate that. So. All of our master naturalists, all of our members who obtained at least eight hours of advanced training and at least one hour of service um, and reported that and it was approved in um, the VMS for 2020, you will be receiving the um, grit and distance pin, the service against all odds pin. Um, it has several names um, and it means all of these things um, because there was so much we were challenged with in 2020. Um, not only us, but you and the program as a whole. Um, what, what will happen is that these, we will pull, I will pull reports um, from our state office in February after the 45 day cutoff um, of hours being reported for December 31st. And so um, I will ship um, all the pins from those reports to each chapter. So I'll pull report, reports by chapter for each, each chapter. Um, on the number of master naturalists in your chapter who would receive these pins and then ship those to your chapter for distribution. Um, and then um, 2021, we announced at our annual meeting in October, which is the, the typical place that we announce the, the next year's recertification pin. Our pin for um, 2021 is uh, the side oats grandma. Um, so Texas's state grass. And then one of the other things that has been requested over and over again is TMN face masks. Um, and so we're excited to have those in our bookstore along with shirts and hats and jackets. Um, and there's so much more that is going to be arriving in the bookstore in February. Um, and we'll be making that announcement on our website and on our listserv as well when those items come back in stock. Um, so our Addison's going to drop that bookstore link in the chat for you. Um, but know that there are more items with the Master Naturalist logo coming in um, into our uh, bookstore in the future. And then I know we've spent quite a lot of time talking about 2020 um, and wrapping up 2020 and looking at um, our program focus areas for 2021, but there are things that are, are, are continuing programs and projects and emphasis for our program beyond. 2021 and things that um, that will continue to um, to to be focus areas for us um, in in this year and if not in this year and years in the future, and so we have our our master naturalist endowment is one of those. Um, our master naturalist endowment was set up in 2016. This is a permanent funding source for the master naturalist program to provide um, additional flexible funding for the program for chapters for project grants. Um, for a litany of other different opportunities for the program, um, and and that that fund is um, is moving and living and breathing and developing within the um, the uh, Texas A and M Agro uh, Texas A and M Foundation, um, and so there's information on this website on that Master Nationalist Endowment, um, the the mission and the purpose of that uh, endowment fund, and um, how you can give as well. 
And then our junior master naturalist program, that's another area of of our program that we want to develop um, with capacity and resources available, um, which seems to be a limiting factor in, in everyday life in so many ways. Um, but our, our junior master naturalist program was an area that was identified as a as a high need of interest um, by a panel discussion just as recently as this 2020 annual meeting. Um, and we know that this is a pro this is an area for development for our program. Um, unfortunately, again, we are just limited by resources and and staff. Um, and so this is something that we will continue to keep a focus on as uh, as resources become available and as opportunities become available in this frame. So, Michelle, do you want to wrap up today's event? I know we're running about 10 minutes until the end of the hour talking about leadership and uh, how our master naturalists can be those Texas leaders of conservation. Yeah, so um, we see our master naturalist program as a leader uh, is in, in its entirety as a leader in conservation um, stewardship and outreach and education in Texas. Um, we see the, the program as a whole. In its entirety as a leader in in this area, um, but we can't be our program together can't be a leader in this area without you and um, one of the sayings we have at Texas parks and wildlife is there's a leader in every seat and that's the same with the master naturalist program. There's a leader in all of you. There's a leader in all of us it doesn't matter where you are, where you come from what you're doing. Um, it's it. What does matter is that what you do with the resources you have um, and where you where you end up um, as this quote kind of mentions. Um, so leadership comes in all shapes, form, fashion um, in all areas, and it can be leadership of the minute, leadership of the second, leadership of your chapter, leadership within a, a, a project or your community. Um, there are five essential leadership skills. You all have those skills and the ability um, to be leaders in the program um, and in your communities. Um, one of those leadership skills is um, good communication. Um, we, you know, we look to our master naturalists to be the uh, com communicators um, with your communities with. Uh, the, the organizations um, and be the stewards within and share that mission of the program. You're a communicator of the mission of the master naturalist program. Um, you're the motivators. You provide positivity um, despite whatever is going on in our nation and in, in our environmental world. Um, motivation and positivity comes from all of you. Um, we can lift each other up within um, through trying times all the time, um, promoter projects. You are the people who are creative. Um, I mentioned some of those projects that uh, we were just astounded and just moved to the core of how our master naturalists are adapting during these trying times. So your creativity and um, the creativity that you bring to your groups in a group setting, um, to your projects and to your individual um, work, this that's the leadership, the leader in you. Um, and then providing feedback, feedback to your chapter, feedback to your the program, um, feedback to the, the projects that you're working on um, and communicating that. These are all the leadership skills that we all have um, and we ask of you. Um, so there is a leader in every seat um, as a master naturalist, how can you be more of a leader? Um, we, you're already a leader by being part of the program, taking the initiative to um, uh, subscribe to the, the core and the values of the program and our mission, um, taking the initiative to go through the training. And, um, and in return for that training, you're providing the service of service back to your communities and the mission of the program. Um, so you're already a leader just by doing that. Um, how else can you be a leader? Um, stay involved in your chapter. Um, we know that things are different right now. Um, you're meeting and communicating in different ways than what you might have come into the program under. Um, but still stay involved. Um, meet virtually. Join a committee. 
Join a committee yeah. of your of your chapter. Your chapter has new and different needs now in this virtual realm, like Michelle was talking about. Um, helping to write articles for uh, your chapter newsletter, maintaining your chapter website or social media for your chapter, and uh, opening up those communication lines um, in this in these new platforms. Um, these these typical chapter business operations continue, um, but with these these changes in, in how operations happen. Um, so we want you to continue to to stay involved with your chapter and find ways to um, to feed back into that chapter growth um, for for not only for you as an individual for you but for your chapter as well. Yeah, and um, seek. Seek virtual more virtual projects. So, 1 of our, um, with the virtual volunteer fair, we have, if you can go back to the other the yeah. previous slide. Um, 1 with the virtual volunteer fair that we have going on right now, or, um, that will be coming up in February. This, um, this fair will feature. Um, projects of our partners, so we need your help in communicating with partners on what. Um, what other virtual volunteer opportunities exist out there for master naturalists statewide? Um, and we'd like to feature them at the, at our virtual volunteer fair in February. Um, so take on a project, take on a virtual project like that spearhead a virtual project. Um, and just be innovative and creative with your projects in your local communities right now. Uh, okay. And then look for ways that your chapter is growing um, as an organization. Um, uh, many of our chapters, and we have three of, of the 50 of our chapters listed here, but three of our chapters host uh, annual board retreats for developing strategic plans or developing uh, leadership plans for the coming year, program focus areas for that chapter. Um, if you are not involved with that part of the process, um, get involved or or see, seek to see what your chapter can do to to think on these larger scale terms for um, for strategizing how your chapter and your your naturalist group can maintain um, it can maintain and grow and stay innovative and creative um, in these very trying times. Some of the example questions that you may want to ask as you're considering a chapter strategic plan is. Um, what does our 5 year goal look like? What are, what are we striving for as a chapter? Um, where else in the community can we give? Um, we talked about our, our DEI or our diversity, equity, inclusion efforts at the statewide level. What is your chapters plan and, and, and strategy for, for, um, efforts along that line or, um, or collegiate partnership. Um, what other types of partnership with organizations are you interested in as a chapter um, and, and developing and putting concerted and intentional effort? I have made that my uh, word of the year, intentional. I'm spending in, um, time and, and energy in intentional direction. Um, and so that's what these chapters have done with their board retreats and their strategic planning is put intentional direction for, um, for their chapter and, and their leadership moving forward into the future. And then looking at these uh, four different leadership roles, Michelle, you took a training recently on these. Do you want to talk about um, how individual members can find themselves within these four roles, knowing that we're running low on time too? And I don't want to. Yeah. Um, so very quickly, um, just kind of glossing over this a little bit. There's leadership roles. These are the four um, main leadership roles within uh, an organization, um, and we, we talked about there's a leader in every seat, you being one of those leaders at any given time. Um, as a master naturalist and uh, any individual really can be, they may play one of these leadership roles at any given time and they may flex from um, one role to another. So, um, as a designated leader, our chapter leaders, your president, your chapter president and other officers, um, you're taking responsible responsibility for your group and guiding the group um, towards its goals and determining and determining how the group will achieve those goals. Your officers are, are um, further doing this through um, chapter board retreats, which are going on um, right now. Um, in January, and if your chapter has questions uh, about how to do a board retreat, we kind of featured 3 chapters that um, do those. Well, um, we'd encourage you to visit with those chapters or visit with our program. Um, Mary Pearl and I on other ideas that you could incorporate. 
Um, there's active followers, followership as a leadership role. Um, you're supporting and following, following the designated leader or leaders of your organization um, in your chapter. You're participating in group in the group by um, helping with decision making and giving in, giving input and seeking clarity. That that communication skill as a leader that we talked about earlier. Um, there's peer leadership. Um, that it's a where a team works together um, and supports e each other in achieving the goal those goals. Um, that happens in our projects, um, your projects uh, locally um, or at at the local chapter level. That happens at your chapter level. Um, peer leadership uh, for chapter leaders governing and kind of bringing together your chapter around the effort. Um, each team member sees what needs to be done and does it. They're taking that initiative. Um, and then there's self leadership. Each person takes care of their self so that he or she can take care of the group. And there's been no other year than the past year where we've seen that more. Um, our whole philosophy with, with the program and the guidelines, the COVID-19 guidelines that we have, um, take care of yourself, keep yourself safe so that we can keep our community safe. Um, and this, this goes in all, all areas of our life. Um, take care of your project um, so that the project can do good for the, the community, the chapter, and the environment. Um, everyone shows personal initiative and character and boy over this past year, um, personal initiative and the character that you showed over the past year has been unmatched um, and we thank you for that. And then just to wrap up our discussion on leadership, our last question that we have here as we end today's presentation is um, thinking about New Year's resolutions and reflecting on the growth of of, uh, as, of you as a master naturalist and, and your chapter and, and our organization as a whole, um, it's, it's good to have these New Year's resolutions and, and think forward um, thoughts on what kind of naturalist leader do you want to be in, a cha in your chapter? Uh, what kind of naturalist leader are you and where do you want to be um, with your chapter at this point next year? And, and reflect on that. We want you to take that moment to, to reflect and, and consider um, uh, all of the opportunities that we've presented in front of you and, and the things that are still to come um, as we get, go forward in 2021. We're so excited about this, these TMN Tuesdays. We cannot thank you guys enough for joining us for our inaugural TMN Tuesday. Um, we're gonna stay on for just a little while longer. I know that we've hit that one, uh, one o'clock mark um, and one hour mark, and we wanna, again, be good stewards of your time. So thank you so much for joining us if you have to go um, please go ahead um, and we will see you next time. Um, we will be making this big announcement, but our um, February TMN Tuesday presenter is Dr. Dr. Doug Tallamy, who received rave feedback as uh, one of our keynote speakers at our annual meeting. This event this year um, on February 9th at noon, uh, he'll be presenting Nature's Best Hope. Some of the same information as the annual meeting with some uh, updates and changes as well. Um, and that event, again, will be uh, published and posted to our website, shared um, throughout social media, and will be open for the public uh, as well. Um, so we're looking forward to our next TMN Tuesday. Um, we'll see you guys there. And thank you guys so much uh, for joining us today. Wrapping up a few questions that I did see in the chat. This recording will be shared here shortly on our website. Um, it takes a few hours for it to download and then re-upload. So give us just a little bit, if not by the end of the day, the day today, first thing tomorrow morning. Um, and then um, we will be sharing information for how to log the, uh, the TMN Tuesday uh, advanced training hour with you as registrants and then also with your VMS admin so that information can get passed throughout your chapter. Um, I know that that was one question that I saw frequently in the chat. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you so very much for uh, coming today. We're so excited um, to kick off this year in, in this type of fashion. And just one, um, I know there's a lot of, we want to be very respectful of your time in your lunch hour um, and those of you who get one. Um, but there were a lot of questions we did not get to in the chat today. So we'll, pot, we'll try to pull out the most frequently asked questions and answer those for you. Um, and I'll separately. frequently ask questions will be on our TMN Tuesdays webpage, and I'm going to drop that link in the chat now. Um, we've got a, a 
series of questions at the bottom of that page already. And so we'll keep um, updating that as we have more questions. Thanks right. everyone for attending. Thank you guys so much. Michelle, I'm gonna stop the chat or I'm gonna stop the recording.